The human condition. Humanity's persistent wanderlust. Our ability to stay in one place has never been a strong suit. Throughout history, from the earliest migrations across continents to the era of sailing ships, aeroplanes, and rockets, we've been driven by an insatiable quest for new frontiers. In the last century alone, our explorations have taken us to extraordinary and remote locations, the South Pole, the ocean's depths, and even the moon. But amidst these accomplishments, another great journey beckons, from Earth to Mars. Given our historical inclinations, it's no wonder that Star Trek captured the collective imagination in the 1960s. The show depicted a courageous crew venturing aboard a remarkable spaceship, fearlessly venturing where no one had ventured before. While we haven't quite realized that vision, NASA does have a roadmap for landing humans on Mars and returning them safely. Here's how they plan to do it. Moon as Stepping Stone to Mars The initial stride towards reaching Mars is a significant one, establishing an advanced, enduring presence on the moon. Though it might not seem like a huge leap, transitioning from the moon to Mars is more feasible than a direct Earth to Mars journey. Earth's gravity and dense atmosphere, while conducive to life, impose limits on space launch capabilities. The moon, free from these constraints, emerges as a vital platform for space exploration. Sustaining life on the moon poses challenges, yet if we can surmount them, the moon could serve as a crucial spaceport, a gateway to our solar system. NASA's Artemis program embodies this long-term objective. Beyond planting flags and making political statements, Artemis missions 4 through 10 focus on learning to thrive on the moon. This involves using lunar resources like water and oxygen and constructing infrastructure from native materials. Concurrently, NASA envisions the Lunar Gateway Space Station, an outpost in deep space. As NASA establishes a human presence on the moon and its vicinity, it also intensifies robotic exploration of Mars. This includes deploying more advanced rovers and, excitingly, deploying flying machines. Ingenuity's successful flight on Mars demonstrates the feasibility of aerial exploration. NASA even plans to station an autonomous space station in Mars orbit, serving as a waypoint for missions to and from Mars. A pivotal facet of Martian research involves sample return missions, marking a departure from one-way trips. This encapsulates NASA's Moon to Mars strategy. Secure a foothold on the Moon, master lunar survival, acquire Martian knowledge, and lay the groundwork for human habitation. With these foundations, we're poised to journey to Mars. Embarking on the Mars voyage. Before astronauts set foot on Mars, supplies must arrive ahead of them, ensuring their survival and return. This process commences with Artemis 10, where the SLS vehicle carries Mars cargo stage one to lunar orbit. Artemis 11 follows a similar pattern, depositing Mars cargo stage two while undertaking lunar surface missions. The cargo arrived via a 25-ton Mars lander containing return ascent propellant, crew power sources, mobility equipment, and a pre-deployed ascent vehicle on Mars. Artemis 12 is pivotal, it delivers the Mars 1 human lander, equipped with surface subsystems and transit to Mars capabilities, to the Gateway Station. The Gateway, circling the Moon, serves as the launch point for the Mars mission. The transit HAB ship, accompanied by the Mars 1 lander, departs from the Gateway. Afterwards, this duo will likely return to the Gateway. The climax involves two astronauts landing on Mars, the culmination of this grand voyage. In essence, humanity's desire for exploration and discovery drives us beyond our current frontiers. Through meticulous planning and technological advancement, we inch closer to setting foot on Mars, a testament to our enduring spirit of adventure. A pressurized vehicle that will function as both a living module and a rover on Mars, this will be their abode for 30 days on the Martian surface, supporting their scientific and exploratory activities. The habitation module must serve as a vehicle too, this is because even in Mars' reduced gravity, the crew will need time to readjust after months of zero-gravity space travel. It might take a few days before the crew regains enough strength to don their spacesuits and walk on Mars' surface. Thus, the habitation module's dual role as a rover is vital. This allows them to transition seamlessly into their exploration mission without delay. However, NASA decides to land the crew vehicle on Mars. It's bound to be an exhilarating journey. There are two mission profiles for Mars travel, short stay and long stay. In the short stay scenario, the journey outward will span 217 days and involve using the gravitational pull of Venus to propel the spacecraft. 
the Mars stay will be 30 days, followed by an arduous 403-day return in deep space. Challenging, but possibly safer than an extended period on Mars. Altogether, this sums up a 650-day mission. In the long-stay scenario, the outbound journey lasts 210 days on a direct path from Earth to Mars, without gravitational assistance. The Mars stay extends to 496 days, requiring substantial planning and pre-deployment. The return window shortens to 210 days, as the crew leverages an optimal transfer opportunity. Remember, this plan is based on existing technology. Nevertheless, NASA is developing an advanced propulsion system to drastically shorten the journey to and from Mars. Both NASA and DLRPA are collaborating on a groundbreaking project. They aim to create the first human spacecraft powered by a nuclear thermal rocket engine. This collaboration, known as the Demonstration Rocket for Agile CIS Lunar Operations, DRACO, is set to outperform chemical rocket engines in space's vacuum. The nuclear-powered thermal rocket is poised to yield approximately three- to five-fold improved efficiency. This advancement is set to result in a spacecraft capable of achieving swifter speeds, accommodating greater payloads, traversing more extensive cosmic distances, and executing space maneuvers with enhanced speed and ease. Unlike any of our previous vehicles, this innovation promises exceptional practicality. This innovation could potentially slash the travel time for a mission to Mars from a lengthy eight months to a mere 45 days. The protracted time a crew spends in transit escalates the dangers they confront, notably perilous cosmic radiation. Moreover, an extended duration for crew habitation on board augments the requisites for vital supplies such as sustenance and water. Every unit of mass carried bears significance in the realm of space travel. The projected timeline for Draco's implementation is surprisingly succinct, within a span of fewer than five years from now. This hints at a considerable degree of confidence within the associated agencies regarding their grasp of this technology. Consequently, it seems plausible that the nuclear propulsion system could be primed in time to construct the inaugural Mars Transit Habitat ship. This, of course, assumes that this endeavor, approximately a decade away, adheres to its anticipated schedule. Of course, those familiar with the spaceflight sector are well aware that punctuality is a rarity. Projects routinely lag behind their stipulated timelines. Yet, it's more enjoyable and rewarding to view these circumstances through an enduringly optimistic lens. The human race boasts a rich history of conquering challenges through unwavering determination and resilience. The human spirit is averse to stagnation. Our innate nature propels us toward progress. Thus, our trajectory inevitably leads us to Mars. Our inherent inclination compels us toward this journey.